Welcome to the e-commerce optimizer show. I'm your host, Scott Reed. So I'm really excited about today's episode because it is the very first 10 minute tune up episode. So this is going to be an ongoing series during which within 10 minutes or less, each episode is going to provide you with one actionable strategy tip, tactic, technique in either traffic optimization or website optimization across those two disciplines. All right. There will be a video component to these because I'm going to be using examples that I'm finding randomly online, especially for the website optimization ideas. One thing that I want to say on that is that with anything that I am sharing in terms of specifically website optimization ideas is that you should always A-B test these on your site to make sure that they are making a positive impact. It's not always the case. Just because something's a best practice and works on one site does not mean that it's going to work on your site. Okay, so that's just one just kind of blanket statement that I want to get out there. That being said, this episode is all about and it's focusing on one thing, which is making product discovery easier for your website visitors. Now, there are a lot of different ways your visitors discover the products and get to the products that they're looking to purchase or research or, or whatever. And those are using navigation, categories, filters, those types of things. But there's also one that's incredibly important, and that is your site search functionality. Specifically in mobile, we see this a lot as being a challenge for many users because sometimes there's a group of users that when they're using the uh, touch keyboard on the mobile device to enter a search query, they're not noticing that they can push uh, search or go down in the upper, I'm uh, sorry, down in the lower right hand corner to initiate that search. And so they fumble around up around that search input box, the search bar, to try to get that search to go through. So let me just show you what I mean in real terms. So the first example is going to be joyrich.com. Okay. And this is an example that needs work. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just see if there's search at the top. There's not. There's not an icon that's, that's clearly visible to me. That's kind of on a different note. But there's not a magnifying glass or a loop, depending on what you refer to that as. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up on my iPhone here the hamburger menu. And I'm going to go to the search. I do see search. So I'm going to click on it there. But now what I'm going to do is search for something. So I'm going to type in here, shirt. Now you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, we have the go button. And that may be very obvious to you, but as I said, many people, or there's a certain group of people where that's not obvious. And so what they do is they go up here and they start trying to enter and they can't do it, okay? And it leads to confusion. So a best practice is to have some type of button around that input box that says search or something or search now or whatever it is, whatever text it is that works best so that it's really clear for your users that when they push that button that that will initiate the search, okay? And that can be an icon, it can be words, a bunch of different things. Now on the desktop version of this e-commerce brand, we do have an icon, we have the magnifying glass up here. So I'm gonna click on that. I, I, I want to make the point, and I'm using this as, as an example, because it's not nearly as big of a deal when you're working on a desktop experience, all right? Because people just use the, the enter button. I'm already on my keyboard. From a user experience standpoint, the easiest thing for me is to, hit, is to hit enter, and that's what I see. So that's fine to me. The next example is Nutiva at Nutiva.com, and I'm on my iPhone, so I'm going to click on, I, as I see that there's a magnifying glass or a loop icon right in the top, which is wonderful. I know that there's search. I'm going to click on that. Now in the search bar, I'm going to type in coconut. So I know that they have some, a lot of coconut products. And so I can do one of two things. I can click the go button down in the lower right-hand corner. Or what I can do is click that magnifying glass on the left-hand side of the search bar. And when I click that, it displays the search results. Now that's a less obvious alternative than having a button that says search, but it still works and it's a good implementation. So from a desktop version, they had a great implementation. With this, I see the magnifying glass right up here at the top, I click on that and what happens? We get a nice, beautiful, very clear and crisp search bar right at the top. So this is a great implementation of search functionality in terms of locating it 
All right, our next example is a brand by the name of Hippies, H-I-P-P-E-A-S dot com. It's a chickpea-based snack product, and I got to tell you, I've been a fan of this for years on the side. It's just, a, it's just a really, really, really tasty product. But in any event, let's take a look at the mobile search functionality. So I'm on my iPhone. I'm going to click on the magnifying glass, and you can see that, again, in the upper left-hand corner, so that's obvious. I come in here, and I'm going to search for vegan because I know that that is something on this site that is relevant. So I see that. And this is a this is a fantastic implementation. It shows me a couple different choices. It says products and then it says view all. So I know that if I click intuitively, if I know that if I click view all, that it's going to come up. And so this is a great implementation in terms of search functionality. Now, interestingly, when we go to the desktop version of the site, there is no search functionality. Okay. Now, there's a couple reasons for this, and I just wanted to, to, to talk about this. This is not a critique or anything. It's just a, more of a comment or, or an observation. When I go to shop and I go to shop all, there are 14 products. So do we need to have search on a site with 14 products? That's really a question best to be answered through user research. Through user research, what you can do is identify to see if there are any product discovery challenges that people are experiencing. And if there were, and those could be potentially alleviated, fixed through using or implementing site search, then that's what you would do. But with 14 products, it's kind of like a six and one half dozen of another if site search functionality would be something that should be included or not. So that being said, I just wanted to comment on that. I thought it was an interesting observation and kind of an interesting case study in the use of desktop search functionality. All right, now we're on our final example. We are at Welly, the brand Welly at getwelly.com. So I wanted to start out by talking about this by reviewing the desktop version of the site first. And I found their use of site search functionality to be really top, top notch. All right, we have it right up here in the upper right, has a magnifying glass, it says search. We can put the, the cursor right in there and we can type in whatever we want. So it was very, very clear and obvious to me as a website visitor where I could go to search for products. But the mobile version was really interesting to me because there was no site search. I went to the site and across the top nav bar, there was nothing, there's no icon, so I go, went over here to the hamburger menu to check out, see if there's anything here that was revealed, and there was nothing. So on the mobile version, there's no site search. I'm guessing that that's some type of an oversight, and it's not by design. Because clearly, if you have uh, a wide variety of products, you have site search on your desktop site, it would only make sense to also have it on your mobile site. Because product discovery is going to be more challenging on mobile, just by nature of the device, than it would be on desktop. That being said, we are closing in on our 10 minute time frame. So I just wanted to conclude this episode by giving you a little bit of homework. And that homework is to go to your mobile site, see how your site search functionality compares against the best practices that I just reviewed with you on this episode. Then after that, go over to your desktop experience and see how that performs. The bottom line is this, if you make product discovery easier and more intuitive for your website visitors, you're just going to sell more product. It's as simple as that. I hope you got a lot of value out of this episode. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you on the next episode. Have a great day.